That's some cheese, part of the Vendetta Sports Podcast Network. Today is Tuesday, July 6, 2021. And today we have a very special guest, Perry Goodman. She is our newest sponsor, actually. So you can find her custom stickers on the store right now. We've been linking them in the bottom of the articles. They're also on the website. So if you see that, this is her live in the, in the flesh. So Perry, how are you? What's going on? I'm doing great. I'm just really enjoying Ontario slowly getting back to what we've all been calling normal and wanting to get back to um, taking that one day at a time. Yeah. So we're going to ask you a bunch of things, but first I really want to start with the store because, you know, I'm someone that also created my own business. So what was like the turning point for you that was like, Hey, I'm going to start my own business. I'm going to actually go for this thing. Um, so that actually began as a way for me to give back to my own team because we um, we won a massive tournament um, in January and we were ready to celebrate in April and March, everything stopped. Um, so we'd gotten really into uh, social media and posting all sorts of training at home updates. Um, and I noticed that there wasn't really a big pool of images to pick from if you want a little gift for cheerleading. Um, and so I decided, you know what? I'm in art school. If anyone's gonna make these, it's gonna be me. So I started to uh, draw our team's own icons um, and that just started getting more traction just through the, the following our team has. And people started asking for university stuff. And I just said, you know what, if I'm doing university stickers, let's get paid for this. Um, and that's sort of how my business started. That's awesome. So am I like allowed to give you my custom order now? Like, can I like, just... <laughs> Is that how this works? Well, we'll see where the summer goes as far as how busy that gets. But like, I wouldn't say no. Um, okay. I, I find custom stuff actually really exciting. I'm just a big Red Sox fan. So that's what I would want. <laughs> just something, just have your brain do its thing. I'm not too picky. It's all good. I like not picky. <laughs> uh, so obviously now that you're partnered with us, what was your first impression when you saw the site? Like, is there anything that jumped out to you Is maybe dive into some of the conversations you had with Kane. Like what was your initial impression of us? Um, the first thing that jumped out to me, because I, as the way I've been trained to think about what things I like and not like in school is very visual. So the first thing that stepped out or I noticed is that there's um, a lot of websites I find out that then Vendetta, they'll focus purely on pro or on amateur and college, even though now that's sort of pro as of this week. Um, and I found that on Vendetta, there's a good mix. And so you can follow an athlete as they graduate from college into the pro leagues in whichever sport they're in. And that keeps it so consistent and easy to read about. And I think as like the more articles keep going, like from season to season, the easier it'll be. And the more I think what I just said will prove itself. Yeah, I think uh, one of the biggest things that maybe makes us different is we don't try to limit any topics and mm -hmm. that kind of fits what your brand is so that you don't have to just cover MLB or NFL, or you can branch out in a number of different areas too. Yeah. And I find like if I'm talk to a friend and they're in very different sports than I am, I can still say, check out this site. They'll have something you like because they've, they have all these different sports they've covered at least once. Uh, Producer Alex, do you have anything on the, the sticker store itself that you want to ask? I just wanted to say like how, is this something that you always wanted to do? Like, I always kind of ask this question to people that we talk to or people that we interview because I always wanted to do like what we're doing right now and what I'm doing right now, but I didn't pursue that until late in my college career. So if, if you had something like that, can you touch on that? And if not, that's totally fine, but that's just how oh, I experienced sure. like through this whole tough industry. So I actually grew up like very, very involved in gymnastics and there's a massive participant base, but very small like merchandising for it. And so like being involved in art as a kid and in sports, like I always thought like, if no one's going to do it, I'm going to do it. And that, I guess, like I made that really competitive and I turned it into let's get an art school degree. Um, and in art school, like if you're, if you're able to back up what you're making and someone's going to like if you have one person in your corner and you're putting out something you're passionate about, you can go really far with it. And I found that like at the university I went to, 
and got my degree from today, by the way, very happy. Um, wow, congratulations. So, thank you. So um, at Brock University, there's a massive, massive athletic culture. And I found that to be very supportive in making art about sport. Um, and I, I really didn't know that was going to be um, a viable option for me when I was younger. I always thought it was do art and make things about like normal art topics or go into sports media and sports broadcasting. And I found that just through where I was that you can definitely put the two together. Make sure to check out Perry's store. It's on the site. And also it is, it can be found. We'll put this on the screen here. P goods, fine art. So do that, fill out the order form and then she'll make you something awesome. That's usually how that works, right? Yeah. <laughs> Depending on how busy it gets. Yeah. That's how it works. I have a lot of friends in gymnastics. My school actually had gymnastics when I went to college, but that's like go? very rare. Where did you go? I went to, it's a small D3 school or sinus college. Yeah. The bears. Yes. Wow. Look at that. Big, big so, NCAA gymnastics fan. So right? I, I actually wanted to ask that because I know most schools aren't super big into the gymnastics, but I was actually curious if you heard of that school. Oh yeah. Um, so fantasy gymnastics is massive and that's sort of who I heard about it because the way the NCAA gets marketed up in Canada is only if like a very specific play goes viral. Um, but just through, I guess, all of gymnastics media in the last four or five, maybe years, um, D2 and D3 schools have gotten a good bit of traction. I I can't even believe how like huge it is. It's a, uh, cause yeah. uh, it, I don't want to necessarily compare the two, but there's always these like crazy wrestling dads just me growing up and it, it feels almost sort of similar in a way with gymnastics too like you yeah, start it's like definitely a right sport. when you're young yeah you grow up if you're five you're already behind yeah. like you you're you're born into that sport and you track through it and it can be a lot but i find that like for people who i know who have gone through the NCAA system when you're in that that's like the biggest payoff and you're surrounded by the culture that you've been excited to to be surrounded by your whole life since you recently graduated, I guess this is kind of a different question, but like, if you could go back to school, like during the pandemic, like how much did you miss all that? You mean like during the year where we were remotely? Yeah. Um, I miss the social part of it so much. Um, I find in art, like even aside from just like the social life of being on campus, and the social life of being a student athlete, I miss from the schoolwork part of it, just being in the studio with other kids in my program. Um, because a lot of the progress we make is just like, I'll look over and see how someone else is painting and I'll sort of like that color and start using that color more, or I'll ask what they're doing to get a certain technique right, or how they're building a frame to put something on. And just being in a room with other people and these are people that you've spent upwards of 20 hours with every week for the last four years. Like it's people you're very comfortable with and you, um, you definitely built a lot off of the social experience of sitting in a painting studio together. Producer Alex just graduated too. I've been out of school for too long. So, uh, it, it was kind of weird for me to hear stories like that just because I don't know how I would react at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I was in that same boat you, too. It's just, I don't yeah. know. It's weird now. I mean, I never liked school at all. So like when <laughs> pandemic happened and that was like remote and everything as everybody else was, I was just sitting there like, all right, can it be over now? I was just ready. Mm -hmm. Do you find yeah. also this year was a great year to test out things? Like you're still a student on paper, but you can see how things would work not being a student before you're like actually outside of school. You have a lot of accolades in uh, cheerleading, so... Yeah, we could. Get, there's probably a ton of topics we can talk about with this, but uh, what sort of like, how would you describe maybe some of the events that you competed in cheerleading wise? Um, so as far as the environment goes, cheerleading, like in order to be at that level, you have to be really proud of the amount of time you put in and to an extent the area that you're representing. Um, so when I represent Brock University in cheerleading, the big thing for us is that we are like we were one of the first Canadian teams to start competing in major American events. Um, and so like whenever you look up cheerleading online, you'll see tournaments happening in Disney World. And so we were the first Canadian university team to really start going year after year. Um, and that's what I take a lot of pride in. Um, Does that feel weird at all? Like being the Canadians? <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, no, like we're, we're raised to really have a lot of pride about it. Um, but like never unconditionally, like know what you're representing. Um, but then also do it with a smile because you don't want to ruin the idea that other people have of being the Canadians. Um, and it's, it's interesting because, uh, so three years ago now, my university team, uh, we, we all made Team Canada together. So I guess the best way to explain that is like an all NCAA team, but it's all U sports because we're Canadian, came from the same school. And so we competed um, out in Poland and just wow. the sense of, it was awesome. <laughs> like my, my family's from Poland. So that was like the dream situation for me. Like it was, it was amazing to compete there. What's that like? I, I don't think I slept the whole trip, the whole week. Like I, it was, well, you have so much pressure to do well on you because you're representing your country. Um, I think 19 out of 20 of us, that was our first time on a national team. Um, I have the added pressure of competing somewhere that I know my family is paying attention to and uh, recently moved to Canada from. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of cultural ties there. Um, and also it was the first time that uh, truly happened being governed by FISU. So like who runs the university games um, internationally. So like a step above your country's college system. Um, and so there's a lot of pressure to just have the whole event go smoothly, to represent your country smoothly, um, and to make friends with as many people not from your country as you could, because when are you going to see them all? Um, likely, like for a lot of people who went there, like I knew for myself, I wasn't tracked into the sport as a child. Like I started in university. So it's really not likely I'm going to make the national team in a regular context outside of school. So like that was my Team Canada moment. And I was just really trying to take in as much as I could for the whole week that we were there. Um, it was a bit much because that was technically my first varsity competition. I'd moved up from JV like three months before. Um, but yeah, it was a great time. And uh, I, I really wish that uh, had COVID not happened, everyone wishes that, yeah. um, that I could have seen how Team Canada would have done in 2020 because that was uh, something that our team was interested in bidding for. How easy was it to transition from gymnastics to cheerleading? Um, it's like getting a new pair of legs and you know, they're legs, but they're not yours. So you have to relearn. Um, it's, it's very different going from an individual sport to a team sport. I found it's gotta at least harder. be some, some kind of an advantage. Then I find the advantage is that, you know, what it's like to be upside down. And that's the only advantage there is because, um, the red, the rest of the sport is completely different. You have the, the switch from individual to team. You have this switch from, for me at least, like being a flyer, knowing to catch myself versus trusting other people to catch me and knowing the right ways to fall are different between the two sports. So like the whole, the way that you learn to be safe is very different. Um, and I, I found also like in gymnastics, you're taught to be very humble and very like regimented, I found. And not that you don't in cheerleading because you very much do, but the culture I find of who stays in the sport for as long as a time is very different. So I had to get used to being loud and being like, okay, celebrating my accomplishments. Cause that wasn't a thing that we had in gymnastics. When do you discover you're good at that kind of stuff? Because I remember being like five, six, and I just knew I couldn't flip. Um, I don't know. I don't think it's so much about knowing you're good. I think it's about how competitive you are with yourself. Um, like I, every year I sort of reevaluate what I consider good. So when I was five, like I was having so much fun and that's, you're good. Uh, um, usually if you're not having fun, you're probably not great. Um, and yeah, I think that just because my standards for what I consider good changes all the time, I, I'm, I'm probably not the best person to ask that question. <laughs> um, but I think usually when you're around grades six, seven, eight, maybe nine. Um, and you start to realize uh, when school gets heavier and you sort of prioritize how good you think you are at that moment is when you would consider if you're good or not good. What does your technical like calendar look like? So cheerleading, like uh, competition here, school, competition here, school, like that's gotta be a hectic a schedule. Mess, but I love it. Um, so last year that we had a full season with cheerleading, um, we had two morning practices a week 
And so from those 6.30 to 8.30 practices, you go right to your physio or your like your post-training uh, rehab little session for half an hour. And then I would get on a bus and go to our school's secondary campus and have a class for between five and six hours. Um, so I, it's, uh, it really forces you to be good with your time management skills every day at least once. Um, yeah. It's a, uh, it's a lot, but if you like it and you know, you're good, other people treat you like you're really good in the sport and they look up to you, um, that motivates you to get through it. I was actually a dance minor in college. I could never remember routines. I feel like I have a good memory, but I could never remember routines. Is it difficult to remember like every sudden motion or every sudden movement in those routines? I don't feel like um, I could do that. I, I never found it hard. But again, like in cheerleading, when you pick up new things really quickly, um, you have other people around you doing the same thing. If you're lost, like you're, you're either bringing someone down or you're paying attention and you can see just out of the other corner of your eye to do exactly that. Um, it's way easier to remember things when you see 19 other people doing the same or at least doing their part in that section you have to get through. You actually have a background in hockey too. Uh, <laughs> Never playing, but as a big fan, yes. <laughs> uh, apparently, Kane. I, I just want to know if this is true. Is Kane the only Canadian that doesn't like hockey? Um, from my personal experience, no. But he's also like in the minority of Canadians who don't like hockey. Okay. Um, Kane and I actually grew up in the same area, and like, um, he so he's from a different city, but in the same chunk of Ontario. And I think when I just wanted up, a reason to call him weird. <laughs> that's okay. When you grow up in an area that really loves hockey and has people who've made it up to Chell, um, it becomes that much more of a big deal in your area. Like, so I, I come from the small town of Richmond Hill. We have this uh, little hockey player you may have heard of, Connor McDavid. Um, yeah, apparently, so if, uh, so if Kane says he doesn't hockey, know who he is. <laughs> yeah. So if you don't love hockey, you're isolating yourself from that part of the culture, wherever pocket you're from. I, I I really want to go to a game. I feel like it's just the atmosphere would be completely different. It's uh, it's amazing. And the fun thing about hockey culture in Canada, um, like there's a lot of things that need redoing. Don't get me wrong about that. But I find that the love of hockey is there, whether you're at a peewee game or at a, a major NHL event. Producer Alex, do you have any uh, questions about her athletic background? I was just going to say, like, maybe has there been any doubts? with you with everything that you're that you're doing because we're only in year three as well here so is there like a you know can I keep this going and keep this getting off the ground or has there been any of those thoughts where it's like maybe like maybe this isn't it oh, I know it's kind of like a sure. maybe there's a that's like a brutal question to ask like don't get me wrong but like you know, everybody oh, okay. in, in like being an entrepreneur or everything you do, starting your own business, you had those thoughts definitely come up. Mm -hmm. It's a thought that I feel like we're primed for a lot in art school. Um, Cause I find like with other programs, you're geared towards a certain job and in visual arts, you're either going to sell enough of your stuff that you're great or you're not. And there's very little gray area in between there. Um, but I found like what really uh, makes me feel better about the stuff I've been putting out is that once I passed the one year mark, um, I started to see some of my old products from a year ago start to become popular again in that time of year. Um, and I found that that like sort of makes me feel really good about like the validity of my products um, and just seeing other companies reach out to me to do commissioned work like for their companies or university clubs even. Um, that, that tells me there's an audience and the audience hasn't just stopped at my circle of friends. And that was the initial fear at the beginning. Did you immediately go to school and know you wanted to do art right away? Mm, I wanted to go to school for art because um, I didn't know what else I really liked come the end of high school. Um, I, I was really into phys ed because I, mean, like, I feel like every athlete is. Um, but I really didn't have the, the time to get good into like STEM courses, which is what I thought I wanted. And then I, this is really cliche, but every athlete wants to go into kin or something to do with the body. 
And I wanted that, but I didn't have just the time to get myself there when it came to university acceptance season. Um, and I said, you know what, like I have decent grades in art. And again, that competitive spirit of like, if I'm really good at it in high school, the next step is doing really well in university. So I got into that, um, but I didn't know what I wanted to go from there. Like I, I had a phase where I wanted to be a medical illustrator. So I would still be in the STEM field because that felt more validating than just saying art school. And it took me a while to grow into understanding that art school is just as valid and you're making money either way. Has there been anything that's been like surprising about since like maybe something you didn't expect when starting the store? Yeah. So the biggest thing I found surprising actually was just the amount of um, school spirit coming from places that I would have thought of smaller areas. Um, there are some schools in Canada that are like what I would call massive and they're probably your average school in the States. Um, but like, so my school has a little under 20,000 people and that's considered one of the bigger ones in Canada. And so when you have schools that are around 4,000 and they're like your little liberal arts colleges or the ones out, um, in the Maritimes, those are the schools where I have the biggest, I don't want to say cult followings, but like the biggest cult followings from. And I think it's just because when you're in a smaller environment, you're that much more proud of it. Um, and it's been really rewarding to see that that's uh, grown to the size it has with those audiences. So what's your goal eventually? Like, what do you, like, where do you see things in like two, three, four, five, how many years? Like, what's your goal? Um, I don't want to make it too simple. Like the goal is just to be able to do this and not have to pursue um, larger clients. Um, no, the goal is maybe pursue some licensing and actually have it go through campus stores. But again, like I know that's getting progressively harder and harder as the schools, at least in my area, um, try to model themselves more after American universities as far as like their uh, branding. Um, another goal of mine is to um, make partnerships more in the sports industry and it's something I've been pursuing but again it's very difficult until sports come back because a lot of sports in Canada is at the amateur and grassroots even club level and those um, industries have really just been getting by month to month right now like it's not an appropriate time at all to try to be um, expanding into that and getting money out of that industry. That's fast my brain like i'm trying to figure out like how do you a make lot all of it these is just through growing like up in sport <laughs> like and getting to a level where you compete in enough travel tournaments um where you other people's coaches and other people's teams owners i was always terrible at making friends in sports uh, see, i i thought i was <laughs> terrible at making friends um just because i wasn't one to talk within my own team and then i got to a level i want to say around high school where i was the only one from my team in my division. And so I was faced with this stark reality where if I'm not going to talk and make one new friend, I'm not talking the whole weekend when it comes tournament season. So I got good at making friends quickly. <laughs> and I think that's benefited me now. Um, I want to say almost on par with the actual technical. Everything now that you've graduated, changed, go back, and redo. Yeah, I would have uh, I would have spent all five years as a student athlete rather than just two through five. Um, in my first year, I was totally content not being involved in sport because I'd come out of a, an injury at the end of high school, and I thought that was it. Like, who gets who gets better after they get hurt? Um, and it took me switching sports to realize that you know it was totally fine, and I I can get better. Just to redefine what better means. Um, and I think that like, especially now with having my fifth year of sport being taken away, that looking back, I would have really benefited from having the first year be in that environment. What's your school like? Like, what would you describe maybe the atmosphere of it? Oh, that's a good question. Am I allowed to compare it to American schools? Like, would that make yeah. it easier? Do your thing. Okay. So Brock is in St. Catharines, which is area and because it's in a tourist area you have a lot of international students so the student body is I think more diverse than a lot of schools in southern Ontario um, 
and we have just a runaway size athletic culture. Um, but we um, we're very good in very few sports, but we've covered a bunch of them. So I would, I don't know, I don't know like compare us to like Gonzaga because a lot of people don't hear about us, but when they do, it's for like two very specific reasons. One of them like being that. basketball. <laughs> um, so that, that's my niche comparison. Um, it's a nice size school because I think a lot of kids from Ontario that want to go to school in province, they want to go to an area that's sort of similar population, but a few major cities over from where they live. So you still get the leaving experience. Um, and also like the balance of academics and athletics, which I really didn't want to say first, because I feel like a lot of athletes would say that. Um, but Brock's actually been really flexible with a lot of its athletes um, being in some of the more time consuming programs, which is how I ended up there because uh, I've gone into a few other programs and a few other schools for art. Um, and uh, talking with the uh, directors for those programs, they said, absolutely not. You're not going to be an athlete and pass this degree. Um, so Brock's been really flexible with that. And I think it's just uh, because at Brock, you sacrifice everything for sport. And unless you really try to go out of your way to not be involved in sport at all, you will either be an athlete, your roommate will be an athlete, you'll be a massive Badgers fan, like you'll, it'll, it'll get to you one way or another at Brock. I definitely struggled wrestling in college. I just felt tired and drained and couldn't find enough hours to sleep all the time. But that's the love of the sport, I think. And if you're, um, if you're in it for the right reasons and you can find reasons external and internal, you're okay with the, the sacrifice it takes to be in your sport. So how well do you know Kane Lander? Like, do you have any like deep, dark secrets you can share? Like, some kind none, of dirt on them none and we know each other's high schools it's about mm. it we, we come from the same area but I think our lifestyles are so different with Kane growing up in football and myself growing up in gymnastics and like the one I think connection I have with a lot of people who grew up in different sports is that we still watch hockey I don't have that with Kane he doesn't watch hockey <laughs> <laughs> what's is there like a maybe favorite competition or favorite I don't know event that you like to go out and compete in um so within cheerleading right yeah i want to say on paper my favorite was the world university championship through fizu where we got to compete um wearing the canada uniform that was amazing um but i find like as far as the vibe check goes um the icu university world cup is the best where you're representing your own school just because um, like the vibes are a bit more relaxed. Like you want to do well. And of course you want to win because it's a world cup, but I feel like everyone's there to see each other succeed. And because you have friends on other teams going and you, you'll know other people, um, everyone's more relaxed. Like you're at the end of the week, you're just exhausted and you want to see everyone do well. Um, that one's also really fun for me because um, like as a fan of uh, college gymnastics, college cheer, um, college hockey, like I recognize these American teams, even if I don't know the athletes on them specifically. Um, like when we'll go to those World Cup, I'm I don't follow the uh, the intricacies of college dance, and I don't know a single athlete on UMish dance. But I'm going, and I love watching UMish, so like that's a fun thing for me to do. Um, and then you figure out that like there's got to be like a hundred American colleges that you're gonna find a team that you want to cheer for. Um, and it's in Disney and it's just, uh, it's an exciting week in what would otherwise be a very stressful midterm week in Niagara Falls. Producer Alex, do you have any other, uh, any other questions? Yeah. The last thing I got here is I kind of liked how most of the dynamic for what we've been talking about today has just kind of been centered around college. And that's how you kind of really kicked off everything and how we talked about the goals and everything. And that was really centralized, like centralized around, you know, being at universities um so i want to kind of just ask like did this maybe start out as like a portfolio builder and like you know getting out of school need something for the portfolio show the you know show employers resume stuff was it kind of something like that and then it turned into wow i can actually do this or was it full-time like 
Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, because yeah. you can, you know. Um, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's definitely not something I would use in a portfolio, like in a, an art school going for a master's kind of sense, um, just because I think illustration still doesn't have the draw that traditional medium does. Um, but it's actually given me a lot of great reference material to try to build what I do want my master's portfolio entry to look like. Um, because sports consumerism is, is still an amazing topic to work off of. And I think if anything, making these smaller illustrations and having the clientele I do right now is really great for understanding how I want those future pieces to be. If I can make money off of it, that's an amazing bonus. I don't think there's other fields where you get paid to do your research um, straight out of university, like right out of your undergrad. Um, so I'm just enjoying it. Yeah, but you, you got to do what you got to love, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Perry, do you have any questions for us or maybe something that uh, hasn't been said that you absolutely want to say to any of the viewers? Uh, yeah, this could be interesting. I want to know yeah. what your guys' impression of cheerleading is and if I can answer any questions or like solve any myths about that. Because I feel like your, uh, your average client or your average viewer when they look at Vendetta doesn't think that much about it and we're there at every football game i i have a massive amount of respect for cheerleaders gymnastics just because uh the person that actually does our our t-shirts she was a gymnast so um i have a lot of respect i don't even know if there's like any sort of like misconception or question that i would have about that yeah i don't know if i have like a, a myth or anything i kind of am just like on the same like wavelength there of the whole respect thing. I mean, it's just something that my body doesn't move like I that. I couldn't do it. My body would never move like that. No. And I would hope that most people that, you know, have those misconce those misconceptions or say those types of things would understand that your body doesn't work, like move like that. You know I, I can't mean? even touch my toes. <laughs> like, Neither can I. It's okay. <laughs> So I, I think it's I think it's wild. I think, you know, the competitive aspect of it is wild. It's not just like I'm Do you ever get pissed off game. at the judges? Um, I try not to. I I um I have a pretty good understanding of how the scoring system works because my team's coach has done an amazing job explaining it and a few of our coaches are judges. Um so I think it's because like our love of strategy. I, I learned to not get mad about how the same strategy works for other people. Um, but yeah, obviously if you, if you thought yourself, you had a great day and someone else had a better day and you just didn't see them. Yeah. I'm going to get a little mad. Um, but I think that's the same with every sport. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't chalk that up to be an issue specifically within mine. Yeah. Uh, Perry, where can everyone find you on social media? Let's make sure to get that up and uh, have Sophie share that on the screen too. Um, on Instagram, you can find me at P Goods Fine Art, all as one word. Um, TikTok, I put some of those. Uh, some of those. Videos there we up. go. You can find me at Not P Goods, and those are the two you'll find all of my work up through. Awesome! Make sure to find and follow Perry on social media. Order something. I'm I'm ordering. I don't know some something hey, Red Sox for me. You can order internationally. I can't. You can. Okay, I was gonna say, who. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh i'm gonna order something red Sox. we'll see what ends up happening but uh make sure to follow perry uh producer alex in the studio all day aj27 myself trey dalbert i'm on tiktok too uh the show handle uh is that some cheese minus the e for twitter and uh underscore that some cheese for the instagram for the show handles uh thank you guys for watching and listening and we will see you next time